So a lot of you are asking, how do I recognize a hot spot? For me, it's very subjective. It's just an area of skin that has received a lot of friction and shear forces, which is just the rubbing of your foot on the inside wall of your shoes. If it's a bit sore and red, and you feel like if I have to do another 10K, if I have to do another full day with the same application of force, it's gonna progress to a blister. For me, that's the definition of a hot spot, okay? And the best cure for that is prevention. And the way you prevent that is just add an extra layer of skin that will offload the shear forces from your actual skin. And for us, we found through the years that kinesiology tape or K-tape is the best material. I know some of you use zinc oxide tape, especially from the army and other stuff. Uh, I've used several myself. I swear by K-tape for several reasons. It's got this nice little elasticity to it. And also the adhesive is such that it's not too strong. So if you're covering actual blisters and you've lanced it and there's a break in the skin, you can at clinic every evening, remove the K-tape easier than zinc oxide tape or other adhesives. And that means it's not gonna completely de-roof your blister. So that means completely rip your skin away. So we can check if there's any cellulitis, which is skin infections that's happening. It just makes admin and redressing a lot easier using K-tape, okay? Uh, so you'll see here, this is the basic stuff you need. I know you don't have some of the items, but that's okay. Uh, you can, you can, if you need any of this, you can tap a medic on the shoulder and we can cut a strip off for you. So main thing is K-tape. You should all have a roll. Uh, you should because we kit checked you yesterday. Um, to lance the blisters, you'll need a sterile needle. Um, you can use a knife or if you have any small scissors in your little uh, Victorian Knox multi-tools or whatever, or just share scissors. So if you really need to, come and borrow, borrow it from us, but we have a limited supply of scissors as well. This comes in handy and, and I'll explain why. Um, some sort of sanitization, so alcohol gel or, or alcohol wipe or anything like that. Uh, gloves is optional. I find, unless I'm doing proper kind of mucky stuff, um, unless I'm doing really, really mucky stuff, uh, it's just more dexterity to use just your clean hands, but do wash your hands before doing any um, self-care and then afterwards as well. And this stuff is called fleecy web. And this is what we put on top of your actual blister once lanced, and we'll go through that afterwards, okay? So um, if you take nothing away from this session, just remember two points when it comes to K-tape. Tape sticks best to take and always round the corners, no sharp edges, okay? Uh, you might have started trying to tape yourself and you may have realized that the tape, if you don't tape it back onto itself like this, uh, this is a, this is a, you know, uh, what's the term, uh, an exceptional uh, circumstance, but that's gonna start peeling away. Back a bit. Yeah, so when, if you imagine if that's an ankle, we're gonna come all the way around so that that edge meets the other edge and that it's not gonna come off, okay? And the second point, do you see how the sharp edges are still there? In your socks or in your shoes, that's gonna start catching bunching and that's going to start ripping off. If you round those corners, that reduces the chances of the tape coming off as well, okay? Those two points, if you take away nothing else, are golden. What we're going to do is go get your roll of tape. You guys want to come closer? And remember, when you're measuring the length, there is a degree of stretch in these tape, okay? So that's something that you have to bear in mind when you're estimating the length of tape. So if you just slightly lift your... So I'm going to come around and guesstimate that sort of length, because there is going to be stretch. So after I stretch the tape, it's going to come over to the front. All right, brilliant, thank you. So cut that length. And then what was the second point? No sharp edges. Exactly. So you can do it individually per corner. Or I just fold it over, saves myself a few seconds, and then just round the corners. Great, everyone seen? Yeah. Grand. So now, pick the middle marker, snap the back tape, and you're good to go, okay? So what you can do a dry run, again, you know roughly you need to cover that area, and you know roughly it's gonna come around to the front of the ankle and meet the edges there. So when you're happy, 
yes, tape sticks best to tape. That's okay. that, that's the uh, what I meant by point number one. By stretching about say 50% ish and sticking on while stretched, that bites down on the skin. That's your anchor, all right? So you're gonna anchor at the heel with a bit of 50% stretch, making sure everything's smooth, making sure the area you wanna protect is covered, and then relax the stretch a bit, pull it over one side. You see how it's already stretched over more than what I estimated? That's fine, at least now. What I'm trying to do here is make sure everything's flat and smooth. Do you see how tape has now stuck onto tape and the extra bits are rounded edges. I'm happy with that, all right? What I'll do now is just make sure everything has a smooth surface because if there's any bunching, that's gonna become the source of your next blister itself. If you have messed it up uh, and it's all kind of looking nasty and bunched up, start over again. Do it once, do it right, that's it. And the only reason you should take off the tape is on purpose to review at the evening, okay? If you do it right, that's gonna stay on for the rest of the day. So that's a hotspot covered. So the common areas we see a lot of hotspots and blisters are at the back of the heel and at the sides, exactly like what you've developed, Philippa. Um, at the ball of the feet here as well, in between the toes, around the toes, so anywhere from the outside to the medial edge to the, to the tip of the edge as well. So those are really the common areas that we see blisters uh, in terms of feet. I know today some of you identified from your webbing or your um, Bergens uh, at, the, at the back of your, at the lower back as well. Uh, but the same principles apply, okay? Is there a minimum amount of overlap? Uh, that you no. Want no, no, no. Just so long as you have uh, a decent amount that's touching the tape, that's just gonna anchor it. Anchor the, by stretch from the back, anchor by tape on tape at the front, that's it. Um, it's not a science, it's just, you know, wing it. Um, fine, so I'm gonna tackle two things at once. I'm gonna tackle blisters or hot spots uh, in between the toes, and then blisters or hot spots on the ball of your feet, all right? Um, it's tricky to tape in between the toes, but there is a technique you can do, it's called a bow tie technique. What we're gonna do is we're gonna roughly measure the length you need to go through in between the toes and a bit of an anchoring area on the ball of the foot, on the sole, and on the counterpart of the side. So I reckon about this length. And then the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna cut a bow tie or an H or an I. It'll become really obvious when I do it now. So what I do is I guesstimate the length off the thin piece I need to cut with any uh, any luck. There we go. See that little bow tie? Oh, it'll take me two attempts. Great. So again, measure it. Yeah, that'll do. And then snap the middle. Yeah. Well, you'll see why I don't bother with these. You can do. But you're right. And then, boom. Okay. Flatten out any scrunching. And that's fine. Now you're right, I didn't do any rounding of the corners and this is why. So this is to protect any blisters, hot spots in between the toes. But if I leave it at that, I'm not following principle two, so principle one, which is tape sticks onto tape. What I do now is the same as the ankle. I wrap it around. And that means I don't need to worry about what's underneath. So I would round the corners with this, but not for the bow tie, okay? Yeah, because if you leave it as that, that's gonna catch uh, with the sock or whatever you're wearing, and then just gonna flick off easily. Same principle as with the ankle, snap in the middle. Uh, if you just straighten your foot there, yeah, thanks. Give it a bit of stretch, make sure it bites. And then you can release the tension, wrap it around, rubbing your hand along the surface to make sure it's smooth. Then tape sticks back onto tape. 
That's a cure. See that? So if you've got hot spots of blisters on the pad, just use that technique. You don't need to do the bow tie. The bow tie was to protect the in-between bits, but to secure it, you do the wrap as well. So if you manage to get a blister there and there, you've got two for the price of one. Okay, but if you only have it on the ball of your feet, just use a wrap around. No need to faff around with the bow tie. Whatever you do, always wash your feet before you do any foot dressing. And if it's wet, let your feet dry because if the skin's all macerated, the tape's just not going to stick. There's no point in doing it. So let you wash your feet, clean it, let it dry. And the, once the skin's no longer macerated, if it's completely soaking wet, which you shouldn't on this race, then you can crack on with your foot taping. Um, always clean the skin. So if you have alcohol wipes, or you can improvise with some alcohol gel and a piece and a sheet of tissue, that's fine. It shouldn't hurt, because I'm not going to stab uh, you into the flesh. It's just to lance the top layer to release the fluid. Cool. So you'll notice your needles are hollow. So when you lance it, even though the fluid might come out from the, uh, the, the two holes that you've put in, the fluid might still leak through the lumen of the needle. So if you're not wearing gloves, just make sure that you're aware you might leak your own fluid into your hand, okay? If you're doing it for someone else, that's even more important. Grant. I'm Try and use gravity to help. So I know that this is the distal part of your toe. So I'm gonna pop it just a little nick there. Sometimes maybe a second one next to it. Did you feel that? Good, so you shouldn't. It's once only. And never resheath your sharps. Do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly, we've got sharp spins, so you can, you can give us your sharps if you want. And just Thank gently you. milk all that fluid out. If you make me two punctures there, can you still use the same needle for that, or you would still? If you if it's the same wound, yeah, or on the same foot, yeah, go for it. But what I mean is, uh, for different yeah, sessions, yeah, different yeah, sessions, yeah. yeah. Once we've lanced blisters, we like to use a second piece of skin called fleecy web. It just really, we've just found through years of using it that. It just reduces the sheer stresses on that flappy piece of skin now. Uh, K-tape isn't quite enough, so we have to kind of reinforce the, uh, the skin underneath with a bit of fleecy web and then put the K-tape on, okay? So again, a small piece of K-tape. You don't necessarily need to round this because it's going to be overlapped by a piece of K-tape. Just enough to cover the entire surface area of what you've lanced. You know, you don't carry fleecy web in your kit, so come and find one of us and we'll give you a little strip of fleecy web. Yeah, probably like this actually. And that's there. Is it sticky by itself or do you have It's got adhesive on the back, so you just peel the, peel the, the protector at the back. Um, and then, where's the K-tape? Right, so toes are always a little bit fiddly to do. There's several techniques. Uh, I'm just gonna th go through one technique, which is where you're gonna tape one strip from the inside to the outside, and then from underneath a second layer to top, okay? So again, remember there's gonna be a degree of stretch, so underestimate the length that you need. Guesstimate what you need there and cut a length. So that's the length covered. Now you have to guesstimate the width. So for the width, I will probably look to cutting probably about three quarters off. And then round the corners. Okay. Another little dry run. Yeah, I reckon I'm happy with that. 
snap the middle. But for this time, I might, rather than start in the middle, start towards the area of the injury. So that the stretch is anchored exactly where the injury is. And then move the stretch over. Okay. Now you'll find you get these awkward bits. So what I do is I try and walk the awkward bits and make a fin at one edge, like that. And all you have to do now simply is just snip the fin and that's flat. Do the same to the other side. Pinch a fin. Can anyone see by the way? Yeah. 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 And then once you're happy with the fin, grab your pair of scissors or borrow your mates. There. So that's one side done. And now you, all you're going to do is do the underside to above. So again, guesstimate roughly the length that you need. And guess the width. Right, so again, same principle. Sorry, sorry. Oh, there's a bit of a fin here. Let me cut that off before I stick it down. If done properly, should this last the whole week? Nah. So day by day? Uh, every, so, every so often. It depends on the person. D depend yeah, depends on, yeah. <laughs> it depends on the person. That solves the next two days. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly, yeah. How sweaty you are. <clears throat> okay, so if you're going to have a shower, you have to repeat it. It, it, some, it might last an extra day if once after you had a shower, but... Uh, yeah. So if you don't shower and it's dry and you've done it properly, it might last the rest of the week. But yeah. We've gone through the principles of um, hot spots on the heels, balls at your feet, in between your toe, on the toe itself, uh, and lancing blisters. With Philippa, she had the blister on the medial side. So, well, on the, on the outside of her toe facing the shoe is what I mean. Now, if her blister was on the inside, that K tape is going to be on the inside of the toe. If you notice, I've actually, because the K-tip increased that, um, the space taken up in your shoe, that is not a problem if it's not touching another toe. If that blister was to be on the inside and you put the K-tip there, now there's something slightly jutting out that's going to rub this toe. So if you're using uh, your bl blister care on the inside of toes, always K-tip the adjacent toe. You don't have to do the full whack job like this, all you have to do is a circumferential protective layer exactly where that K tape is going to be rubbing on the skin. So okay? It's flat, it's fine. Any little bump. Yeah. For it. your hot spots, it's going to be completely flat. There's no fleecy web involved. Crack on. If there's blisters on the inside and you've had to lance it, put a layer of, uh, put a bit of fleecy web and then a layer of K-tape on, that little bump is gonna rub on the adjacent toe, protect it with a simple circumferential strip of K-tape, okay? If you've got a very small blister but you want to prophylactically K-tape it, would you still use a fleecy web or no, just K-tape it? Just K-tape. The fleecy web is just once, you're, once there's a break in your skin, it's just that extra adhesive protectiveness to prevent uh, any more shear forces that's going to bunch, that's going to cause your de uh, skin to bunch up, bunch up, bunch up, and then be therefore become a further issue inside the... But that way I get to see you then in the medicine if I do that. Yeah. 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 Well, we'll, we'll if, if it's becoming quite complicated and we need to actually yeah. de your skin with a scalpel, we, we can help you do that sweet, for sure. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Yeah. Grant, <laughs> uh, everyone happy with that so far? Great. Uh, you're going to ask about back. So Lou's got some uh, chafing on the lower back from her pack. We do see that quite often, actually. We see that uh, on the lower backs and in the shoulder straps as well. Uh, I've, we've seen a few out on the checkpoints today already, and I know some of you have tried, and good effort for trying. We, re we re really appreciate that. But I think some of you, what you've done is just put a little tiny patch there. Um, it's very difficult to apply principle one, you can, you can go all the way around. But what we found is just hooking it 
just to the sides where your love handles are, it's pretty, it's, it's more than sufficient for lower back protection. So, try and just guesstimate from just in front of your waist to the other side. And then apply principle number two, which is around the corners. <laughs> Snap the middle. Apply a bit of stretch and anchor it. to where the chafing is. Make sure it's snug and flat. Round to your front. And that's it. Who do you usually do it for? And, uh, if your area of chafing extended inferior or superior, just layer it. Overlap, maybe 50%. Just layer it. That's it. Done. Cool. Perfect. No worries. If you just have like spots of just the love handles, would you still go all the way around? I would do, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I would do because that little bit doesn't have enough leverage around. So it's just going to get caught on your pack or on your inside of your t-shirt and just rip away or what ripping away is fine what's worse is if it bunches up and then and that that's going to be pressure points that's going to cause blisters and or make the situation worse sure. so i know it's, it's a lot of tape to go through please use your own tape first if you need more we have more if you go through your own supply then there'll be enough for everyone else just from our supply question, in, in regards to this so obviously as i sweat it'll start lifting yeah um so we just stop and reapply it yeah if you time. if you if you think that it's in danger of doing that you can you can like i said overlap and do two or three different tiered layers right and that'll just anchor it down to yeah the exactly perfect Grand. uh cool so i think just recap what we've gone through two points to remember uh tape sticks best to tape always around the corners we've gone through common areas of injuries which is your heels toes in between toes your, your, the pads of, or the balls of your feet. Uh, we have spoken about lancing, clean, so dry, clean and dry your feet. If it's macerated, not on this race, but things like your Peru or your wet UK based races, if it's wet and macerated, let it dry. When your skin's a little bit smoother, then attempt dressing of your feet. Uh, if um, you are going to, um, Oh, I said, tape, if you're gonna lance the inside of your toes and apply fleecy web, that's gonna increase that surface area. It's gonna be a little bump. And if it's touching an adjacent toe, cover that adjacent toe with just a thin layer of fleecy web. That's it. Any questions? Can I ask, in terms of shoulder chafing then, oh, my same, is it like a vertical strip? Yeah, so similar to the lower back. If you just extend it so that you have a lot of tail, so you have a lot of anchor, it's just like, when you're climbing, when you do a stop and up, whatever, just to make sure you have a decent tail. Okay. Yeah.